Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Row, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And we're also available wherever fine podcasts are available. Larson, I'm excited. We have our first sponsor tomorrow. So be sure when you watch the SmackDown episode to support that sponsor by clicking on the link that we're going to have available for you. But it's a surprise as to who the sponsor is. It's a good one, though. We're also available at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson, where you can support us financially. And in return, you get stuff like you get to enjoy the live stream. We've got uh, uh, 30 some people, 49 people. Watching oh, cool. Right wow. Now, man. A lot of people yeah. joined since I changed over to my notes. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, we're also available at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash going in raw, where we have right now, I think seven designs, seven designs. I'm looking for eight by the end of next week. Me too. But I say that every week. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're perpetually working on. I hope this this shirt you're working on is going to be. Oh, I feel like it's going to take me 45 minutes to do it. Yeah. It's just really hard to find 45 minutes of time to concentrate on doing it's it. Not though, man. You just it do really it. Really is no. You it really do it. is you hard to find it. 45 minutes. Anyways, we're going to talk about raw right now, right? Oh yeah. wait, man, we got to talk about oh, patrons yeah. real quick. New pledges. All right. Well, here's the thing, man. These people, they that are our patrons. They plunk down hard earned money uh, so that we can do the show. And that's fantastic. And so I think that they they deserve from a dollar up a shout out here on the Raw show. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, here we go. I don't know. Maybe I read some of these already. I don't know. Uh, Gary Logswaren, Stephen Patterson, Andrew Monahan, uh, Corey Smith, Michael Belgan. <laughs> Not Michael Elgin. Not the unbreakable one. No. King of Swerve style, Damian Dam. Craig Tula. I remember Craig Tulis. He yeah. re-pledged. Oh. Terry cool. Bredden, Kiyomi 216, The Undertaker. The Undertaker. Uh, the Undertaker. Jeremy Jones, Jay Navillis, Zach Edwards, Franz, Paros Stadkar, Zach Edwards, Heel Smurf, Will Begley, Blind Hatter, Jordan Gonzalez, Shane and Amy Love Larson, and usually Steve. Guns Nat, Benjamin Davies, Jazz Dane Clark, Daniel Urenda, Carmen Childers, SM. SMM84, the commentator, the commentator, did twice. <laughs> Mr. Magnificent, Joseph Shipman, Randy Yammer Jr., Leo Ruiz, Ruiz, Bobby Bugatti, Bo Carr, Scotty Bond, Luis Pizzetta, Antonio Munoz, Jeremy Parenti, Michael Engels, Richard Ark, or Arce, Arce? I don't know. Josh Jones, Joshua R. Bishop, undisputed Spotify champion, Kevin Jenkins. Uh, Dustin Ravnica style Cox botch champion MVF uh, Darren Edgy Ethan Weldon Brandon Lee Jeffrey Peter Oliver and Corey Carmona thank you very much we got to start doing that a different way wait way, wait, wait, wait. yeah it takes time. a lot of time but didn't uh, Scott Steiner the Animorph pledge or did he edit his pledge we got an email someone's name was Scott Steiner the Animorph oh I laugh. don't know I didn't notice let me check see. yeah anyways uh, Scott Steiner, the Animorph, did something or another. Yeah, and I, I, and I saw his name and I laughed. It is a funny name. Anyways, Raw in an... Oh, yeah. Raw! Oh. Raw! They edited their pledge. Okay. Um, so, Raw in a nutshell, Larson. I, I saw a lot of people on Twitter shitting on Raw, man. Um, the opening segment wasn't good. Uh, That's my first curse word, five minutes in. <laughs> the, uh, the closing segment, the, the main event, wasn't that great. But there were some, some decent spots in between the we beginning try, and end. We try to remain positive. We try yeah. to we don't we try not to paint with the broad stroke. We try to point out the positive. Hey, look. I already know what I'm putting in the thumbnail. It's freaking Titus and Apollo Crews. Oh, yeah. There will never be another there will never be another better picture, another better selfie in the history of man. Yeah, it was great. Because that selfie was amazing. It was fantastic. I loved it. 
<laughs> and did you see it? Well, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I thought I was. I think I just feel like I was more entertained than a lot of people were by it last night. Sometimes I'm easy to entertain. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not. We'll start with the opening segment. Okay. Because it was a mess. It started out as an episode. I, I kind of was entertained by it though. I think part of it. No, and I think part of it too is that the crowd seemed either bored or confused by what was happening because there's generally no reaction during the whole segment. Yeah, no, I know. So it starts out as an episode of uh, Chris Jericho's highlight reel. The highlight of that part was he gave a shout out to Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Yes. That was cool. Yeah. Um, The Miz comes out. Well, he said this is probably the last time you're going to see the highlight reel because I'm going to go to payback. Highlight reel on Raw. On Raw. Get the belt off of Owens and and hightail it to SmackDown. Yes. But we know that's not true. No, it's not going to happen. Miz comes out, and he cancels the highlight reel, says it's now an episode of Miz TV. And so as the as the, the ring crew is breaking down the highlight reel set, transitioning to Miz TV set, yeah. uh, Dean Ambrose music hits. Yeah. He comes out, and then he, he just says, no, it's not Miz TV. You know, I'm paraphrasing here. This is now going to be an episode of the Ambrose Asylum. Now, the interesting part about this is, is they, uh, I think someone asked us a question about why Finn and Seth never addressed their previous issues. Can I, can this I interject segment was pretty really much quick? All about that. Can yeah. I interject really quick? Yeah. I feel there were two very distinct moments last night that were very us. Yeah. That, at the start of the show, and I'm not suggesting for a second it was because of us, but sometimes, you know, maybe people listen, I don't know. There's been some coincidences. There's been some coincidences, and I know it's because, I know it's because, You know, I think I saw a ghost when I was a kid, but I know in my adult brain that it was just a trick of the light. Or it could have been a ghost. Well, well, yeah, in that respect, a low-level writer might be watching this. Um, That, and then you you note this later on, the Mrs. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone on Twitter pointed that out. I know, but when he was doing it, I was like, that tell that is top notch. Yeah. That, and you've done that for many weeks. Uh, done it at least three or four times. Exactly. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um. But anyways, they did exactly this because we had a fairly lengthy conversation based on that question you're talking about. Where why is it Finn and Seth are cool all of a sudden when Seth is the guy as a heel injured Finn Balor? We yeah. know what really yeah. happened, but as a heel, he did that. And now Finn's cool with him. So this. Entire idea of why is it baby faces are just cool with baby faces after they've healed and and, and yeah yeah you know. and so this like you said this entire segment was just about Ambrose and Jericho making up for the fact that you know they had the Ambrose Asylum match and uh, uh, Ambrose, Ambrose destroyed the fifteen thousand dollar jacket yeah yeah and so uh, Jericho says you know hey you still owe me fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars and Dean says well, yeah well I got you a gift. Mm-hmm. And so he presents Jericho with a box. Jericho says the last time I opened a gift didn't work out so well for me. Yeah. He opens the uh, the box and it's a sports sports coat yeah. with Christmas lights on it. It's like a sports coat you'd get at like the Salvation Army. Yeah, it's pretty like, much. Yeah, it looked like kind of ratty and it had like Christmas lights on it. And Jericho seemed pretty tickled with it. Look, I'll, I'll be honest. It could be that it could be this. I thought the structure of this opening uh, this opening segment, I thought it was solid. I think it was kind of cool to see sort of uh, turning the whole idea of a TV talk show within a wrestling show on its head by like canceling one, canceling the next, and moving on from one to the next to the next. I thought it was an, an idea that I don't think had been done no, before. No, I just felt like they were trying to jam a lot into one segment. I think it was. I think it was a decent idea that just, I don't know if that idea can really be executed the way it, Needed to be. To, to, I don't think it could be ex- uh, executed effectively because it's, it's such a, like you said, it's just a, it's a mess of an idea. Yeah. Although I think like the 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 basic premise is okay uh, because like I I don't know I kind of like when they like they bring the rug out and Jericho's just standing there seeing his entire his world like his surroundings come crumbling down in favor of somebody you know, else. You can look at it as a metaphor. Yeah. You know Jericho essentially being you know his show being removed from mm-hmm. Raw because he is going to be leaving mm-hmm. Raw for a, a spell to tour with his band. Exactly. Or just the idea that he's going to be going to SmackDown. Um, and then The Miz coming in. He's not going to SmackDown. I know, but storyline-wise, that's what he thinks. Uh, then The Miz brings his stuff in, then Ambrose brings his stuff in. Um, so I don't know. I, I And then Jericho ended up putting Maurice on the list because uh, Ambrose gave Miz like a Dirty Deeds, I think. And then Jericho was just standing there. I don't know, like... 
I was entertained. I was kind of entertained by the interplay between everybody. You're right. The crowd was dead. Mm -hmm. But I thought Miz was doing good work. I thought there was, there was one part where um, when Jericho was telling the Maurice that she was going to go on the list for marrying a stupid idiot, they, her, and, her and Miz both kind of cracked up. You can kind of see she had kind of an Emma smile on her face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of cracking up about that because I ended up watching it twice. Um, <laughs> not because I wanted to, because I, I, you know, you know how it is with kids. Yeah. You just, yeah. you know, you catch what you can and then you watch the rest when everybody's gone. Anyways, that led to uh, next up was Matt Hardy versus Sheamus because last week Cesaro took on Jeff Hardy. Yes. So to leading to the I mean, decent Decent enough build to pay back. I mean, you yeah, know. they're doing this thing where where they're feuding, but they're both both teams are, are trying to remain faces. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of both of these singles matches, the one last week, and the one last night, you know, there's tension uh, centered around the finish. But in the end, everybody shakes hands and they're good sports. Yeah. And there was kind of a twist on this one, so Matt Hardy ended up going over, kind of because of some shenanigans from well, Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Well, Jeff Hardy kind of distracted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And but it wasn't like you know dastardly cheating type no, no, stuff. No, there's no interference. They just sort of snuck out with a win. And Sheamus was like Cesaro was up in arms. He wanted to throw down, and Sheamus is the one who calmed him down. And said, yeah. hey, let's be good sports. Let's yeah. shake hands. <laughs> Matt Hardy snuck in a delete too. I had to rewatch that a couple times to see if I could figure out exactly what he said. But because like Sheamus had his hand extended, and I think Matt Hardy said something like, "If I shake, then delete." Something like that. Because it was very quick, but he definitely yeah. said delete. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was funny. I don't know. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think in terms of like, like, why is it I'm more invested in this build with two face teams than I ever have been in a club build? And they're like a heel and they're always like heel face because they don't really book the club. Interestingly, they really don't. But it's not like this is I don't know. I just I like all the participants, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Crowd seems to be into the Hardys, though. Yes, they but are. Man, very they, much. They're going to go bat shit. Damn, another curse word. Um, when they uh, when they start get, doing the broken stuff, when they start doing the I broken know. shit. So after that match, um, we saw Kurt Angle backstage on the phone. Okay, here's one of my problems with Raw. Even though now that I think about it, there was a lot of Kurt Angle. They're giving Kurt Angle too little to do. He's in a lot of little backstage segments. Yeah, I want a giant meaty chunk of. You Kurt want him Angle. to open every episode with a 20 minute promo? You wouldn't like that. I'm not complaining about it. I would love that. Okay, make it happen. I think it'd be great. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that because obviously I'd get old quick. I'm just saying you have a guy. Here's the thing about Kurt Angle. He was in a bunch of little backstage segments. They were all scripted. And Kurt Angle, you know there are certain actors where they can read anything, any scripted line you give them, no matter how bad it is. Yeah. And it's always entertaining. It yeah. might not be convincing, but it's always yes, entertaining. Yes, and that's what Kurt Angle does. Yeah. Kurt's that dude. Yeah. He really is. Um, so he's backstage on the phone, and the Miz and Maurice uh, come into his office, I guess. The great thing is, though, he's on the phone. It's like they're making fun of the phone backstage segment because he's on the phone, and he's saying, no, I'm going to talk to Callisto, see if he really wants to do this. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> it's because Miz uh, hung up. Um and then, uh, you know, the Miz gives Kurt Angle some some grief about, you know, that segment opened the show. Mm -hmm. And Angle says, OK, well, we settle our problems here in the ring. Yeah, that so, seems to be his mantra. Miz, you're going to be in a tag match tonight. Jericho and Ambrose teaming up against Miz and a partner of Miz's choosing. So he mm -hmm. advises the Miz to go and find himself a tag team part yeah. partner. And that was kind of a storyline that ran throughout the rest of the show. Yeah, I always like doing that. I did that on uh, WGPW last night. I wish they could have backstage segments where you can go around asking people to be their partners. That'd be great. That would be great. I wish their custom videos loaded up faster, too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, then we had, what is this, Neville? A tag match. Man. Um, Neville and know, Perkins against Gallagher and Aries. This illustrates to me, this, this hammered home the point that you made and that I definitely agreed with last week, I think, on the NXT 205 Live episode, the recap. Where you said 205 Live needs to be its own thing. It simply needs to be its own thing. Well, I either said it needs to be its own thing or if they're going to have them on or Raw, or, make it seamless. Yeah, I, I, because when I, when literally when I saw that they were going to do a 205 Live match, I was like, I, I don't care. It was a really good match. That was fun. Yeah, it was okay. I just don't, like, if, if I'm not going into a segment thinking, oh, this is going to be cool, I'm just not going to be into it. And, I just feel like I go to 205 Live for the 205 Live stuff, 
And the stuff that's on Raw, I know it's not going to have that. The implications aren't really there. The, the matches on Raw are more or less advertisements for 205 yeah, exactly. Live. I exactly. And I don't need that. I don't want that. Let 205 Live be its own That's thing. why I kind of feel like it would work better if, say, instead of just having 205 Live competitors wrestle other 205 Live competitors on Raw, just have 205 Live competitors on Raw wrestling anybody. Yeah, but I don't know. That'd be confusing because it's like, then why are... Why are I don't know. I don't like that. I like I like keeping on their own island. NXT's on its own island and does great. I know, but this, that's a different situation, though. I know. No, dude, I know. I'm just saying, look, the, the bottom line is 205 Live, it's it's dead in the water because of the crowds. Oh, yeah. It's. I mean, that's... And I think it's branding, too, but that might just be me. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like it there. I don't like it on Raw. Take it off. Get it out of here. No, I went on Raw, but I wanted to be more... That? Have it be more a, a seamless part of Raw. See, that would just be confusing, though. You know? I don't think so, no. Really? It would be, I mean, I always use the analogy of WCW Cruiserweight division. It was, it was, you know, granted, they didn't have their own show. Yeah, that's but, the thing. But by and large, they, they, you know, Cruiserweights wrestled Cruiserweights. But every now and again, a Cruiserweight would win, say, the TV title. Mm -hmm. And he'd just wrestle people from various weight classes. Well, yeah, people and it would, was great. People would graduate up. No, I get what you're saying. I don't know. Well, the problem with WCW also was that, like nobody would really graduate that high up from the cruiserweight division because Hulk Hogan was there. I know, but you, you know they'd still get heavyweight titles. No, I, I know they'd what you're get saying. The I mean, TV honestly, title like the, the U.S. title, the U.S. the U.S. title was really their main title because you had all those old, super old guys fighting over the the big belt. No, I get what you're saying. I, I mean, we just disagree on the subject. I just would rather see 205 Live as its own thing, and they concentrate. I want that. I want them to concentrate on making 205 Live the best thing they can. And that in, and that means taking it taking it out of those like there's it's it's just a dark match like situation. No, you know? I know they're putting on great matches. I know. Anyways, um, Austin Aries ended up winning with a discus five arm, which probably means that payback. He's going well. I guess we'll find out what happens tonight. If yeah, if Austin Aries ends up on the losing end of the stick tonight, because did he say he has something special planned for two hundred five? Well, tonight? he was talking to Kurt Angle and said he had some idea. Yeah, and then on the Raw Fallout thing, he said you guys will find out on two hundred five. Yeah, but I don't know if he has a match. I think it's uh, Gal. It's a Gallagher versus Neville on two hundred five live. I think that's the match. Okay. Um. So I don't know if he's going to be involved. Maybe a, a special guest referee situation. Oh, know. that could be because he said it's going to. He 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 emphasized the word special. Yeah. So you're probably right about that. Look at you. Look at that brain of yours. Good job. All right. Um, then we had a Braun Strowman promo. Yeah. Which one was this? This is right before the dumpster match. He came out first. Oh, okay. Then they did the backstage. Delivered thing. the okay. promo. Yeah. He, yeah. he called everybody in the arena. He tried to get heel eat. He called everybody in the arena to pile up pieces of garbage. But then he eventually said uh, something about Roman Reigns and he got a face pop. Exactly. You can't have it both ways, Braun. No. Nobody. Look, I, I'm a piece of garbage. That's totally fine as long as you refer to Roman Reigns as a piece of garbage. That's what everybody's saying on that Pretty arena. Much. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, look, what did we say like six months ago? Let Braun on the mic more. And look, yeah, it's gold. It is. It's gold every time. I know. He's fantastic. I think every one of you are a piece of garbage. <laughs> Roman Reigns is garbage. <laughs> because that's what he does, man. He he speaks. It's like it's like the counter to trying to counter the what chance. You remember how we say like with like Dean Ambrose is perfect. For countering the what chance? Yeah, because, because the cadence of his speech just it just ran, it just yeah. goes on and on. Yeah, with Braun, he says a sentence and stops for like five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> but no one wants him. Nobody wants him because they love Braun's Roman right oh, now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, then we had uh, Angle and Callisto backstage. Although I like that Angle. Everybody else calls him Callisto. Angle just calls him Callisto. Same as us. Um, and they're, they're backstage, and Angle was very, very. Um, Encouraged by Callisto showing some fighting spirit. Some heart. He said, I'm not trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. So that led directly to Braun Strowman versus Callisto in a dumpster match. What did you think about this? I was fine with it. I was yeah, okay with it. I guess I was too because it wasn't... I know Strowman lost, but it was like the most technical loss you could have. Yeah. Like literally he landed on his feet... In a dumpster. Well, that made it worse. And that's what Corey Graves said immediately when it happened. He says, oh, this was the worst thing that could have happened for Kalisto. Yeah. And I like that because yeah. it's true. I mean, that was good. Because you give Kalisto the win, which is good because they need to do something with Kalisto. Yeah, I know. I know. And then Stroma still looks strong because mm -hmm. for the most part, he dominated the match. And then afterwards, he beat the hell out of Kalisto. Yeah, I know. It was fantastic. Some, dude, 
Some of those, and I know you like you the choke give, slams were insane. You have to give you have to give so many props to Kalisto for that core strength of his because Braun. I swear to God, in the first two ones, he picked him up like this, and Kalisto like just you have to like just lock everything in because he went up horizontally with Braun just with one arm. I know that that looked hard, and especially hearing about how rough of a bump choke slams are. Oh my god! To take yeah. three of them and look like Braun was really dude. Those look stanky. Some muscle in those them. look nasty. Man. I I love. I, I I was like I was hurting on those ones. Yeah, those look like they freaking hurt, man. So uh, Strowman uh, beats the hell out of Kalisto, puts him in the dumpster, mm-hmm. and starts pushing the dumpster up the ramp. Now we've seen this spot several times. Where yeah, sure. A dumpster takes a dive mm-hmm. off the stage. Foley and the uh, cact. Uh, Foley and chainsaw Funk. Charlie. Yeah, that was sort of the. And back then the stage was. At least double the height. Oh, so back then, seemed, they were dumping them off like 10 feet. Yeah, it actually yeah. seemed like you know a, a pretty decent height. But whereas, those two guys just laughed that shit off. Oh, I know. Whereas I think the stage now is maybe two and a half, three feet. Right. So anyways, Strowman pushes the dumpster up the stage, mm-hmm. uh, straps the lid shut, pushes it off with Kalisto inside. It's still a cool spot. It's still a cool spot, although you have to wonder, like, how bad is it really? Like, number one, we didn't really get a good look inside the... Uh, so they might have been padded on the inside of mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. But, like, how bad would it really be to be dumped off in it? I mean, it can't well, feel from good. A, from a couple of feet, probably not that bad. What Ten do you feet think might be worse. What do you think is worse? That or getting or taking those choke slams? Probably taking those choke slams. Probably taking those choke almost definitely, because, man, those look like they hurt. God. I'm sure they did. Yeah. So after a commercial break, we come back, and Kalisto is getting uh, put on a stretcher. Well, sure. And then... Uh, Put into an ambulance. Yeah. Well. And then right after that, they had a Roman Reigns video package. Um, my God, that was long. They all they started off, they kicked off the show with literally five minutes of recap, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed that or mm-hmm. not. Usually, I don't. I started late, so I just fast forward through all of it. Well, I got, I, I started late. I started, God, I swear it was 10 minutes, but I guess it was only five minutes because I turned it on. When it, and I swear it was like 506, 507, something like that. Cause like, oh man. And Jericho was just down coming down the ramp. And I, I was thinking to myself, did I miss like a segment before this? No, you didn't. But I guess not. No, because they had that long video package and then they had the opening uh, graphic package for the show, yeah. which is kind of long too. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, Jericho kicked off the show. Yeah, it was really long. Like I was, I was not happy with that. No, and then they did another really, really long package on Roman Reigns because he did, did he did like a sit down interview with WWE, WWE.com. dot com. Yeah, they and this, talked that about was actually later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, they did another one. Yeah, later on. I think before the main event. I don't know if I made note of it, but yeah, I think it was before the main event. Let me ask you this because I thought for sure, or at least during the third hour, I thought when uh, Braun was about to destroy Kalisto after he lost the dumpster match. When Kalisto was backing up in the ring, I thought we were going to hear Roman Reigns' music. Did you think the same thing? I thought at some point that Reigns might have come out. I thought he might, too. And then when he didn't, I was like, oh, maybe they'll do it at the end of the show or something like that. I don't know. Because it's raw. You have to end raw with his music. Yeah. Um, What do you think about Reigns? I kind of like Reigns not being around. Oh, I do, too. Okay. Makes him And I hope by the time, yeah, and hope by the time payback comes around for his match against Roman, he's still selling those injuries. I should be clear. I'm kind of happy whenever Roman Reigns isn't around, <laughs> so I, I can't just relegate it to payback, but people like Roman Reigns. There yeah. are some people out there like him. Um, this is something that I actively did not watch. Oh, the Bray promo? Yes, because it was kind of more of the same. It doesn't matter. It's a formality of a match at payback. They really should have just had it smack on SmackDown. You know, my expectations are so low for this House of Horrors match. Let me ask you something. Is it going to be better or worse than Mania? And in one sense, it would be hard pressed for it to be worse. Yeah, but but if we're the, point, if we're sitting there and it's some film thing that a just isn't good action, yeah. b over edited, <laughs> and c not a live match that I paid for, yeah, I'm gonna be extremely disappointed. Really? Yes. What if you have a really really good field of view? What if like they what if they put it on like a thing that's crystal clear? You know what they should just do is project that on the ring. Well, then you have to go like this. Well, no, they'll show on the on the Titan Tron. They'll show it on the Titan Tron. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of torn over this one. But the thing is, if it's, if it's I a would live match, yeah, I don't know what they could do with it. I would prefer a filmed battle at the at the Wyatt Compound over a boring but there's live no, action match. There's no Wyatt Compound anymore. Well, the land exists. The actual structures that make up the but compound. It's, it's You're a right. House of Horrors match. Yeah, where is he built from? Who Bray? Yeah. I don't know if they say. Yeah, I don't know either. 
I don't know. Like, is the Wyatt compound kind of like uh, Springfield for the Simpsons? Could be. <laughs> it's stateless. Um, anyways, then we had Dana Brooke versus Alicia Fox. I didn't even know this match existed until this morning because I got on. It was very short. I got on to WWE's YouTube channel to see, like, what I may, may have missed. I was like, oh, I got to fill in the gaps now. Um, and, uh, yeah, this match existed. It happened. Alicia Fox versus Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke won clean. Yeah. And then Emma was lingering. She came out maybe halfway th- through the match. Mm-hmm. And then after Dana won, she comes into the ring. They talk a little bit. Emma comes up and gives her a hug. Emma is still hilariously awkward. Everything she about her. She still like she wants to smile all the time. It's fantastically awkward. Yeah. Like every, she, she seems like she is in a perpetual state of uncertainty. Like she has no idea if like what to do with her hands, where to move her shoulders in conjunction with like her hips or and, her feet, and, and what emotions to express. <laughs> That's, yeah. Oh man, oh that was funny. It Anyways, was funny. She, Emma gives uh, Dana Brooke an unwelcome hug again. HR issues right there. You want to watch one of them videos? Don't hug your coworkers without. You shouldn't hug your coworkers at all. If it's their birthday, unless they maybe initiate it, but then somebody's initiating a hug that shouldn't happen. No touching in the workplace, Larson. Do you, yay or nay? Sure. No, no good. No, this is no good. This is okay. Better. Okay, okay. This is this is an HR video now, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody on Twitter, I think, I forget who it was, said they should do HR videos in the WWE, but Southpaw wrestling style. <laughs> That'd be rad. That'd be funny. You know what I did last night? What? You see that War Machine picture? Yeah. That's great. You want to see some nose pictures? No, I do not want to see any nose pictures. Let's talk about this Samoa Joe oh, yeah, okay. Ooh. club interview. You know how I just said that? At Dynamite Scott said that. I, I, I took a picture of some oh, tweets that I liked. Good. From Canadian Dreamboat, Dynamite Scott. Cool. Yeah. So right. let's talk about the Samoa Joe club interview. This is not a, this is a botch too sweet right here. It is. I you know what I didn't even watch this. I just saw like this, oh really? I just saw the still of Smojo doing this, and I was like, "That's good enough for me." Yeah, it was just it was. It was I mean, I understand you know sometimes you have tag teams put together strictly for the purpose of a match. Yeah, and if that's the case with Smojo and the club, it seems weird that Smojo is dropping two sweets on Gallows and Anderson. Really? Yeah. What What was the context? Did they just throw, like like they're all on the same page? At the end, they threw it up. And well, this is what happened. Is they talked to Joe first, and 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 he does you know a good Joe promo, of course, about you know beating people up essentially. Yeah. Highly verbose. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Anderson and Gallows. Anderson says that they've known uh, the good brother Joe yeah. for a number of years, yeah. and and you know they talked about ways to beat people up. Okay. Uh, Gallows called uh, Enzo and Cass a couple of nerds. Okay. And they went back to Joe, and he more or less said, you know, he's going to uh, beat down Seth Rollins because of what he did to Triple H and Stephanie. Mm-hmm. And interview ends, they too sweet. Yeah. You don't like that? It's, I don't like it if th- this isn't going anywhere after this match. Oh. I don't like it. Really? No, I don't think Joe should be too sweeting anybody. Really? No. Oh, man. You're crazy. Hell no. I like that. You're, you're, you're firm on that, huh? Yeah. Wow. Unless he is in an alliance, a faction with the club, he should not be too sweeting anybody. But if they have a history, if they know each other, I mean, going back Doesn't a matter. little, it was endorsed by the Young Bucks on Twitter. Doesn't matter. They said Joe has been a good brother for a long time. That's fine. Too sweet backstage. Oh, just not on camera. Yeah, man. See, this is so. This is this is a violation of of your rules of kayfabe. Because even if they've been cool before. No good on camera. Because yeah, in my mind, a, a too sweet just isn't a salutation. Okay, what is it? it it's 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 like it's like a secret handshake for a club. Yeah, it means our, me- we have our own mean, club. It means membership in something. We have our own club. Stop. Not gonna happen. AJ too sweeted me. I'm not in a club with him. I understand that. Well, you didn't get mad at you. Tw- Wait a second. You too sweeted AJ. You're not I'm in talking, a club with him. I'm talking about on, on camera, television, on kayfabe wise. Oh, in the universe. Yes. Gotcha. So unless Joe and the club are in the lines together, mm-hmm. I don't feel like they should be too sweetie. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I think your take on it is kind of the stereotypical way that they would do it. I kind of like that this is like, oh, they're referencing. We've known Joe for a while, which kind of in a way foreshadows what ha- ended up happening in the match. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind that at all. It's just the too sweet. 
I'm okay with it, man. That's fine. You I'm can okay be okay with it. With it. Yeah, I cannot like it. That's good. Darth Vader, too sweeting a Borg. It's kind of like that, huh? No. No, not at all? No. Because Resistance I, I don't, is I don't, not futile? I don't think Vader and the Borg would be good brothers. I'm not talking about... I'm talking about Darth Vader, not Vader Vader. Oh, no. Darth Vader. I know. Darth Vader, would he too sweet Vader? Big Van. No, I think he might be upset that he took his name. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. He would say... Darth Vader would say to Vader, gimmick infringement. <laughs> Enzo and Cass and Seth were going to try to take on Joe in the club, but Joe in the club jumped Enzo and Cass, taking Enzo out of the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gallows and Anderson hit a magic killer mm-hmm. on Enzo. Yeah. Taking him out of the match. Uh, commercial break, the comeback. Kurt Angle says Enzo's unable to compete. Mm-hmm. And uh, here's your new partner, mm-hmm. um, Cass and, and Seth Rollins. And Finn Balor. And it's Finn Balor. And I wish they were Such doing sexy so- man. something more with Finn. Yeah. They're not doing anything Less with Less clothing? No, just storyline. Oh, dude, wise. they're protecting the shit out of him. Oh, they, they I, need know, to protect I know. Him. I, I know that, but come on. You know he he's gone for eight months. Yeah, and they're not really giving him anything meaty to work with yet. Yeah, he's man. on a, a segment of Miz TV on the pre-show to Payback. He's not on. Are the, you serious? Yes, he doesn't have a match. Miz TV is going to be on the pre-show at Payback. Yeah, special guest Finn Balor. Man, well, yeah, oh, man. Okay, well, you know what? Sometimes they got to bide their time. Shinsuke hasn't had a match on SmackDown yet. Yeah, that confuses me still, too. And if, <laughs> and, and if the rumors are true and they're going to wait till Backlash to have his first match, that's another month away. Ooh, no bueno. No bueno. I know they need to start moving that feud along yes. with Dolph, huh? Maybe we'll get more tonight. We'll get a lot tonight. He's opening the show, Shinsuke is. Nice. That's what they said on Hey, uh, let me ask you something about Raw Shinsuke. last night. What? I, I think they did this in NXT. They refer to him as the artist Shinsuke Nakamura on NXT. I don't recall. I don't recall either. But I heard them mention that on the uh, the promo. Yeah, on SmackDown. What do you think about that? I'm kind of anti. Yeah. He's the king of strong style. He is the king of strong Why style. Why don't they refer to him as the king of strong style? I don't know. He has a history of dominating using strong style. I know. I mean, all the other, you know, in NXT, all the shirts reference strong style. Yeah, I know. He's not a painter. No. When I think of the artist, I think of Aiden English. Um, I think of Prince when he was the artist. Yeah. yeah. Formerly known as Prince. Yeah. Which is cool, but it's not Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, so anyways, Finn comes out as he's walking down the, r- the ramp. Uh, the commentary team uh, references uh, Finn and Gallows and Anderson's history in Japan. Yeah, I kind of half heard this. What exactly did they say? Remember? Um, they just said, you know, they, they had history in Japan. Yeah, okay. That's it. Okay. Pretty much it. Yeah. Nothing specific, obviously. Yeah. But they just you know mentioned they had history. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, Finn's a face. They're heels. How do you feel about that? Them interacting as foes. I mean, obviously, I like some buildup. Yeah, I know. To it, I and know. you know, obviously, referencing their history instead of just kind of a couple sentences. This should have been a big thing. Yeah, should have been kind of a big deal. It could have been a huge deal. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been really cool. So it was an okay match. There was some good back and forth. It was just a. It, this felt like a like a match you'd see after Raw ended. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. that's what it felt like. A dark match made event, and then all six of them like too sweet the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you know they do that stuff. Yeah, I know. Okay, so let's talk about this. Jason the Cabby asked if Seth's new finisher was enough for me to scream. Well, okay, so do we know what they're actually, like, no. kayfabe boys? We don't know what they're no. calling it. Okay. Um, he suggested Hailmaker. I don't like that. Because hail is different form of precipitation? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Kingslayer is another idea yeah, thrown out I there. I want to say Hackworth mentioned that one, but I think a couple different people mentioned that one. Um, what do you think? I mentioned Kingslayer. You said Kingslayer yeah. as well. Yeah. That's your vote? Well, I mean, that was the first thing that popped in my head. Mm-hmm. Since they were kind of using that branding He didn't form. actually use that to slay the king, though, did he? No. No. What do you think of the move in general? I think it needs to be sold in a certain way, and I don't think Anderson did it. I think... Go, I th- that's a good I th- point. I think, I think it needs to... Like base hits in WCW versus NWO World Tour, mm-hmm. people need to sell it like that. Yeah. And Anderson kind of did a, a, an out-on-his-feet type sell mm-hmm. I think that people just need to just crumple to the yeah. ground yeah to sell the, the destructive power of the King Slayer whatever they call it I'll be honest with you I'm not really huge on it he doesn't put a whole lot of stink on it either because because I think when people especially last night after it debuted I saw at least one gif of uh, Kenny Omega's version yeah, of sure. that in his match against uh, Okada and it's not exactly the same because Kenny does the kind of pump mm-hmm. action with it um 
But the way Kenny did it, it just seemed like it was more yeah, I know. destructive. I know. And I think they're like sort of, I would say, kind of equals athletically speaking. Oh, yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I mean? I feel like Seth needs like a more athletic finish. Like the curb stomp was amazing. Yeah, curb stomp was perfect. It was fantastic. The pedigree was storyline wise apropos. And I like how he teased it and, and, mm-hmm. and said, no, I'm not going to do it this way anymore. And then went yeah. to the new finisher. That was well done. I, I go back to my thing about, so Okada is an athletic dude, not the most athletic dude, you know? He just knows how to tell her, like, the best story. Yeah. <sighs> Seth, you have a really, really athletic, they call him CrossFit Jesus. I want, he needs a finish that's like. Well, I know he used to do, or, you know, he does do the Phoenix Splash. Mm-hmm, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but I know Rich Swan does that as well. That's yeah. one of his finishers. I feel like I, I go back to our review of the Shibata Okada match. The the Rainmaker is kind of akin to like it's it's in it's OK. So Curb Stomp seems like really messed up. Yeah. Then you have that you have like stuff like the attitude. Adju- uh, yeah. The attitude adjustment. You have well, even that you're slamming a guy to the ground. You have moves that are like ridiculously powerful, even though they don't look like they should be. Like a dirty deeds. Yeah, but even then, you're ramming a guy's head into the yeah, ground. Yeah, I know. But like the leg be. drop. I'll put like yeah, the yeah, leg yeah, drop. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Like when Okada does Rainmaker, you're done. When somebody else does a Rainmaker, pff, you know who cares? Dana Brooke does Rainmaker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Seth Rollins can have a move that looks devastating. That just doesn't you're supposed to take for granted as de- devastating, like the Rainmaker. He should have a move that actually looks devastating. I know. Should have something more athletic. Yeah, but you know, apart from Seth breaking John Cena's nose, mm-hmm. Seth really isn't the you know like he's not a stiff worker. Doesn't seem like no, sure. Like when he does his his elbows when he runs turnbuckle turnbuckle. He's not he's elbows. just been a slightly unfortunately stiff worker. You yeah. know, like he's just he's had yeah, some... yeah yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that as a, as any sign or any disrespect to Seth. But, you know, he doesn't work as stiff as... No. Certainly I'm, not as stiff as, say, Shinsuke or... <laughs> now that Shabbat is retired, I'm, yeah. I, I'm kind of anti-stiff worker, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, and so that might just be part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, A, if it was sold as essentially a knockout move. Yeah. Because yeah. I kind of, in, in one respect, I kind of like that, and it seems to be, you know, a general thing with in WWE that they're, they're utilizing more striking moves as finishers. Sure, yeah. Which I like because I like finishers that can come out of nowhere. Yeah. That are sudden and just happen out, you know, out of the blue, essentially. When you can combo that, like with like with the black mass, like when Tommy N did that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm I'm. It's a work in progress. It's I a feel work like. in progress. I will uh, reserve judgment until yeah. uh, we see it. A few I'm more cautiously times. optimistic. I'll put it though. I have faith in yeah. Seth. Yeah, I, I do too. Remember that when they they banned the the curb stomp, mm-hmm. and so for two or three weeks he was trying to find a new finisher and yeah. try different things. Yeah. You know, it was just a feeling out process, and then. Yeah. I know he's been using this at house shows and dark matches, so maybe just mm-hmm. with a few more reps, he can get it so it's just smoother and snappier. Well, I think I'd like to see it as like a like a really really nicely built finish to a singles match, and I want to see how it plays out there. Yeah, I'll then I'll make my judgment. Yeah, Miz was talking to Cesaro and Sheamus backstage. I totally missed this. What happened? Oh, he was just trying to. I don't even know if there was audio for this. Oh, okay, it's one it of those. It was just a quick little backstage thing where he was trying to convince them to be one of them to be his tag team partner. Yeah, can we talk about how terrible this women's segment was? Okay. When Alexa Bliss says, have you ever kissed a boy? I get that she's a heel. I get that. But when you start straying in the mean girls territory, it, it, it goes off the rails. I can't stand that stuff. Shouldn't be about that. Like you're making like you don't have the men doing that kind of crap. Why yeah. are you making the women do that? Because they're women. You know I what know, I mean? I, know. I don't. I can't stand that stuff, dude. Um, I thought this was awkward. I, and the, here's the thing. Alexa Bliss is. I'll say this. Alexa Bliss is the best talker the, in the women's division across brands. Name a better talker. You can't. Charlotte gets flustered sometimes. Yeah. Um, and she gets kind of monotonous, I guess. Yeah. Um, although I like I like her heel promos. Um, Bailey, uh, I mean, Bailey does what she does, and she does. Bailey does what she's supposed to do well. I just, I'm not huge on a lot of what she's supposed to do. Yeah. You know, when you have anxiety at the drop of a hat, like, and you're, it, you know. Well, I mean, it'd be one thing if that were the thing, but. There would be ways to, you know, if that is the case where she gets nervous real mm-hmm. easily, there's a way to, to use that to help build the character. Yeah, no, I know. But we, I feel like we went through that with NXT and she found her confidence and then she gets to the main roster. It should have gone a different direction. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that's why she's not really connecting to that degree. Um, that said, I mean, her and Sasha have really good chemistry. And I think when they play off that 
and and are less scripted, yeah, then it's less awkward and it's more effective. But I mean, Sasha's decent on the mic. Yeah, not great. Alexa is great on the mic. Her promo um, before Bailey came out was really good. She is strong on the mic. I just don't really. I'm not into what was written for her mm -hmm. in terms of like calling Bailey out and saying, "Have you ever kissed a boy?" I don't. That was just like, oh, really? It seemed unnecessary because she seemed. You know, she was. She was kind of. You know, saying, "Oh, this is payback's in your hometown, so you're mm -hmm. gonna lose in front of your family." Yeah, that was okay. No, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that was fine. But That's yeah, fine. But the 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 thing about not kissing a boy seemed completely unnecessary. It was it was cringeworthy. Yeah, it was not good. And then there was that awkward moment where she tells the crowd, "I don't care about your opinion," which was fine. But then Sasha like cuts her off to get the crowd reaction. I don't know. It just seemed like a jumbled mess. It felt like Raw and SmackDown were just sort of like not on the same page. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, so uh, Sasha essentially uh, set up a match or she had Kurt Angle set up a match or however that works uh, so that she could take on Alexa Bliss. Yes. And, and Pretty short match because Alexa Bliss just said, no, said, I'm out of here. I'm not going to do this. Talk to you guys later. Walks up the ramp, gets counted out. Mm -hmm. And Bailey is on commentary. And uh, as, ba as Bliss was about to head backstage, Bailey leaves the commentary table Grabs Alexa Bliss. Yeah. As if to take her back to the ring, Alexa Bliss escapes, mm -hmm. goes backstage. Bailey turns around. Alexa Bliss comes out back uh, onto the ramp and attacks her. Yeah. Good Sasha job. comes running up the ramp, and then Bliss runs backstage again. Yeah. So Bliss is losing at payback. So oh, yeah. Sorry, she sort of stood tall. Yeah, she is. Um, let's see here. Then we had. Uh, oh, I see. What did you think about this? You don't like this? Jericho and Ambrose no, backstage? It was, it was it was charming, but, it, you know, if. When people talk about Dean Ambrose seemingly being complacent, mm -hmm. I just look at it, this segment and I'm like, okay, so why people would think that? Because it's yeah. funny, it's it's some entertaining, Here's it's amusing. My thing. I wonder, like, but there's nothing meaty to it at all. I feel like Dean. Oh, it's such an unfair knock. It is. I think it is overall because, like, he's he doesn't have a say as to what they're. Hey, we're gonna do a backstage segment with Jericho. I feel like Dean is giving it everything he can. I agree, but I, I, I kind of feel like not that he's not trying his hardest. I just feel like at times he knows when he when he has to do things. I, I, I feel like I see on his face when he said, "All right, we're gonna do this," and, and uh, I don't doubt that he's trying his hardest. But at the same time, I feel like he's like, Ugh, I know. I feel I like he do this? he's kind of neutered. Like creative is kind of neutered. The guy. Yeah. I think that's kind of the problem too. It's like. You can so creative can script Miz to say you're lazy and you're complacent. Why is why isn't creative doing something about that then? I know. Because it's not. I honestly don't feel like it's his performance necessarily. And maybe you do, like I said before with Apollo Cruz. Maybe you need maybe you need to take more risks. But I don't know. I feel like he's doing what he can. No, I I, I agree with that. I just feel like at times he's he he wears on his face that he feels like what he's doing is not what he wants to do. Yeah. You think, and that's a problem with his performance, you think? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Because this was, like I said, this was fine. It was entertaining. There was some good back and forth and, and, and Dean saying he wants to be off the list because it would, it, it, it tarnishes or hinders their ability to be a, a cohesive team. Yeah. I understand that. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. They're back and forth about it. Talk about the jacket and whatnot was cool. Uh, the way Jericho wrote him off the list and then put him back on was funny. Mm -hmm. A little over the top. Yeah. But funny. Um, you know what they need, man? They need to do like a net, like, okay, so we talked about this. I'm just coming up with this. This is probably going to be a crap idea. They they have their wannabe Ring of Honor with NXT. Yeah. Okay, they have whatever the hell 205 Live is supposed to be. Do you want them to have a wannabe CZW for Dean Ambrose? Yeah, kind of. But you don't need the blood. You don't need all the, I don't like So it wouldn't be stuff. CZW. Well, I, well, no. They have They have like normal matches, I think. It's not all backyard wrestling there, is it? Well, I think but, I don't think I don't think now is backyard wrestling, but I think I'm they not still saying do a lot as ECW. When I watched the few episodes of ICW that I did, it was just edgier. So, like, I kind of want like I don't know, like a one hour edgier. They're not going to do that. No, I know they're not going to do that. But there needs to be a place for a guy like Dean Ambrose. I feel like there's no place for him I right now. I think if they turned him heel, he could at least crank up the edge a little bit. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Yeah. He needs to go heel. He was on our list for people who need to go heel. Yeah, he really needs to go he heel. He was on the thumbnail for that. He really needs to turn heel. Or just like base a show around him. All blood, cursing. Okay. Yeah, get the gorillas of destiny in there. Or yeah. at least the one that curses a lot. Yeah. That'd be cool. Just him and the gorillas of destiny is all you need. Uh, let's see here. Then we had, oh, Heath Slater. Oh, they were, so Heath Slater and Curtis Axel 
We're giving an interview with Charlie For about the Marine Five. That's right. And then the Miz comes in and asks them, "Hey, fellas, does anybody, anybody you guys get to fight over who gets to be my tag team partner?" And tonight? Slater says, "I already have a partner." In walks Rhino with a plate of crackers and some uh, easy cheese. Can I just say I love Heath Slater? And you know who we forgot to put on our losers list for the mix of the shakeup? Who? Golden Truth. They have effectively been replaced as the comedy tag team act by Rhino and Slater. True. Who I think I, I kind of like better than the Golden Truth. I do. Slater is hilarious. Rhino's funny too. I know. They're they're so good together. It's just kind of a bummer that they are where they are. I know. Or they've been relegated to that. Curtis Axel's great too. Yeah. So uh, both Slater and Curtis Axel turn down the Miz's offer. The Miz mm-hmm. says, you know, you won't work in this town again. Mm-hmm. Curtis Axel says, where? Kansas, Kansas City? City? Yeah. It was funny. That was good. Um, so eventually Rhino offers Maurice a cracker. Well, he says, you know, Maurice, is, is, she's, she seems a little upset because she's saying... You'll never work out yeah. in Hollywood. And then Rhino says, you really could use a cracker with some easy cheese on it. Yeah, and then Maurice smacks the plate out of his hand. And Rhino responds, of course, very sad about that. I know. He was shocked and sad. I know. Because of Maurice. I don't want your cracker with your easy cheese. Um, Next. Yeah. Kurt Hawkins promo. This is my highlight of the damn night, man. The way this ended. Yeah. Kurt Hawkins comes out and says the superstar. What does he call it? Star factory. Yeah. Star. Yeah. Kurt Kurt Hawkins Hawkins star factory. Something like that. Uh, And uh, the Paul Cruz comes out. So we knew it was going to happen. He ended up winning. Oh, can I mention something? What? I forgot about this. So Dana Brooke won with maybe the worst Michinoku driver I had ever seen in my life. It was real bad. Here's the thing. This is is one I'm not going to crap on her because when I saw her do it, I, the thing that I thought to myself was, if I attempted to do a Michinoku driver, that's what it would look like. You dump the person first, and then you land on your butt afterwards. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what she did. Yeah, she did. And I'm like, that, like, because doing this crap as you're sitting down is probably really hard to do. Well, that's, so, why, that's why you practice. That's why you practice, I know. It looks like she had never practiced. Um, but uh, Titus is so strong. Everything he does looks so easy. You know Titus I mean? or Apollo Crews? I'm sorry, Apollo Crews. Yeah. Uh, because then he gets the win over uh, Kurt Hawkins. Yeah, with, with his, his uh, sit down power sit bomb down power type bomb. move. Yeah, um, it's more like a spinning one too. It's, it looks it's so smooth when he does it. Yeah, well, I mean, he he, he picks him up like a, a belly to back, throws him up, spins mm-hmm. him around, then power bombs him. Right. So then he um, then uh, as he's celebrating, you know, he picks up the three count. Titus Brand comes running in, and he's like, "You're on your way." You're on the road. I'm so proud of you. And then he pulls out his picture to take a selfie. And by God, it's the best selfie it's ever seen fantastic. in my life. It's so amazing. And it seemed like uh, Apollo Crews was kind of at least uh, entertaining the thought. Well, here's the thing. This morning, no, at 2 o'clock in the morning last night, he tweets this. Not sure if I've ever seen Titus O'Neil as happy as he was after my victory and Raw. Got me thinking about this Titus brand. Hashtag make it win. They're going to go all in on this Titus Brand thing. They're probably going to mess it up. Oh, but yeah. I feel like they could. Th- this could be huge for Apollo Crews. I agree. You can give him some character. Yeah. <laughs> I love Titus. That selfie was great. The, it the was fantastic. On Apollo His Cruz's expression, face that was, was money. Brilliant. That was money. Brilliant. <laughs> so good. He nailed it. Well done, Apollo. So uh, after that, we had the. Uh, we talked about this a bit where mm-hmm. uh, Kurt Angle and Austin Aries were talking backstage. Austin Aries had an idea mm-hmm. presented to him. Kurt Angle seemed uh, intrigued by it. I just wish they had a little bit more. You know, they're in TNA at the same time. I wish there was a little bit more they're of that. They're not going to reference any of that. They're not going to, but at least they have a history. Uh, uh, Aries gives uh, Angle a banana. Yeah. That was good. Uh, the Miz. It looked kind of weathered, though. Yeah. How do, you, how do you prefer your bananas? Weathered? Or fresh green. I don't like any green on it. Really? Nope. I like a little taste of green. A no, little bit of green. I don't like any green so on it. So it's bananas. like almost a solid banana. Yeah. It's like solid. Its mass is crazy. I almost kind of like it starting to get a little soft. Oh, what is your problem? It's because it's, Who it's, even are you? It's because it's more flavorful. <sighs> See, I don't Good. like that much flavor. It's too sugary for me. Yeah, I don't really eat bananas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention during the uh, the Slater Axel uh, Miz segment, sure. someone passed the Miz a note, and the Miz said, "Oh, don't worry about it, guys. I have my tag team." Right, partner. right, 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 right. So, anyways, right, right. going back to this uh, Angle Aries backstage segment, Aries leaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, in walks the Miz and Maurice. Yeah, uh, the Maurice or the Maurice. Maurice. <laughs> the, Maurice. The Miz says, "You know, hey, I got my partner. All good." And as uh, the Miz and Angle were talking, 
the drifter walks oh, by it was in great. the background. It was fantastic. And Angle says, is that your partner? I don't even know who that guy is, says the Miz. Uh, no, that was fantastic. That's what 2K18 needs is the ability is to, mode? Cut, is to cut promos. Oh, that'd be good. If they had like a custom career or a, like a career mode for the drifter. Yeah. And so you just spot like backstage interviews happening and then you just walk past. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And then you have to get yourself from show to show drifting. Exactly. That'd be good. I like it. Uh, then we had the, the main, main event. event. Yeah, it was Ambrose and Jericho versus Miz. And when Miz came out to announce his partner, his partner did not show up. He said he has a flair for the dramatic. And so I was like running in. Who is this going to be? I don't know who it's going to be. Um, I had read the spoilers in advance, so I knew who it was. Oh, I did not do that. Um, so anyways, uh, so Angle uh, comes out and says, you have a match. Because the Miz tried to cancel the match since yeah. he had a partner. And Angle comes out and says, no. Nope. Uh-uh. You uh, were having this match regardless if you have a partner or not. Yeah. Ring the bell. Yeah. Two on one handicap match. Correct. So, so uh, Ambrose and Jericho were giving Miz the business for a, a good amount of time. The business. Um, they uh, all uh, Ambrose takes the Miz up to the uh, announce table. Yeah. Um, lights go out. Lights come back on. Bray Wyatt has replaced the Miz on the table. I thought that was a decent visual, but I don't care about any of this. I know. I don't. I, don't. I mean, I okay. Trying to stay positive. Fine. Like, I kind of like that people, like, they all freaked out over Bray Wyatt. Like, they are all selling him. Like, Miz was selling him. Oh, yeah, but, like, the crowd didn't seem to care at all. Oh, no. That crowd didn't know. That crowd was quiet. That crowd wasn't really given much to work with last night. No, but, you know, usually when that, when Bray Wyatt shows up, people pop because people like Bray Wyatt. But there was zero, basically zero reaction to, to Wyatt showing up at the main event of Raw. It seemed like to me. I want. I worry that they they buried him to such an extent that people just don't care anymore. You don't care anymore. Do, do they have they have done a colossal disservice. They have done a colossal disservice. Like I, I honestly, it it's. I, and I said this for years. He could be inserted at the main event level and, and always be taken seriously. And I'm even. I'm so just doubting that right now. Yeah. Like they have. They have dropped the ball so hardcore. It's unbelievable. Yep. It's been bad. It's been real bad. So anyways, uh, Bray, uh, Sister Abigail's Dean Ambrose into the set. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, makes his way down the ring, both he and Miz. Uh, Bray gives uh, Jericho a Sister Abigail. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But didn't no one pinned anybody. No one won the match. Uh, Wyatt was celebrating. Uh, Miz comes up from behind him, puts his hand on mm-hmm. White's shoulder, and was, raises. Well, he kind of raises one arm and has this really cheesy uh, <laughs> smile on his face, which yeah. is pretty funny. Yeah, Bray Wyatt didn't uh, didn't like that. He so, was Miz's sister uh, Abigail too. I don't know. On one hand, I'm not optimistic. On the other, he did close out Raw as the man who just doled out a bunch of sister Abigails, which everybody sells. Yes, maybe they have plans for him on Raw, but jeez. It's it's all be for what all for climb. all for Randy Orton, all for that. What the hell? I know. I mean, I know that Randy's a draw. I get that he draws money. I get that. But, but he's a draw geez. with or without the title. I know. All for that. What the hell? like? I don't know. I try not to think about it because it bugs the crap out of me. But man, that is just what a what a colossal failure on it's on the waste. part of creative. It's a waste. Yeah. That's horrible. Because at least if you're going to do that, come out with an interesting story. No. Didn't even get that. No, we didn't. Ugh. Yeah, not good. It's all crap. Let's answer some questions. Yeah. Larson. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I got to I gotta actually get to the questions. Mine, I have it here. I just need to load up all of them because there are 97 of them. Oh, my goodness gracious. A lot. We get our questions, just so you guys know, from the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Oh, your kayfabe corner thing. Nice. Here we go. Dom the Man Hilbert. Um, the man. Hey, friendos. Through some sort of magical shenanigans, you have both been transformed into dogs. Which WWE superstar would you want to be your owner? Bonus question. What breed would you be? So we are now dogs. I wouldn't. Okay, number one, being owned by a WWE superstar seems like a nightmare because they're always gone. Um, so I'd want somebody who's capable of choosing good roommates. Um, I, I would want to be owned by Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. Oh, that's the best answer. Because I think they've taken their dog on the road with them. Oh, that's the Josie. best answer. That's their dog, Josie. I can't, I can't beat It's that. a French bulldog, I believe. Yeah. But I would want to be a pug. 
because I'm a pug owner. Yeah. Pugs are great. Yeah. Tons of personality. They snore a lot, but yeah. I don't, you know, I'm the pug, so I'm the one doing the snoring, so it's not an issue for me. You, would you be rubbing your butt all the time? I don't know around? if that's just something my dog does or <laughs> if that's something all Circling pugs do. Circling around a lot. What kind of dog would I want to be? I would be what well, my first dog was. She was like a collie mix of some like a lab collie mix, but she was smart as a flipping whip. That dog was so chippy, was smart as can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who would be your owner? Oh, same as you, man. You and I be on the road together with the Bryans, with the Danielsons. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd be I'd be with you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, <laughs> Eddie Minivar, he's getting personal here. Yeah, I know. What do you guys love and hate about each other? What I hate about you, you know, what I hate about you is, is what I hate is when like, you'll catch stuff that I miss and I'll feel stupid. Sometimes you make me feel stupid well, because I'll miss things. Yeah, it's you. Okay. <laughs> what do you hate about me? I don't like how you always talk about how dry your nose is. Oh, do you want to see some nose pictures? No. Nose? Would you really hate that? Yeah, I'd really dislike that. What do I love about you? I love you, man. <laughs> I love, you know what I love about you? I love when you run stuff down because you don't do it very often. And when you do it, I know you have total and utter conviction behind it. Have you followed uh, Cian Almas on Instagram yet? No. Because it totally plays into his gimmick. Yeah. It's all not just partying, but like it's all recreation and leisure. It's like him and it's all slow mo shots of him like diving into various pools. Or emerging from pools. It's great. What do you love about me, man? I'm trying to distill it to one thing. <laughs> you love many things. Yeah. The list is too long. Oh, that's so nice. I love how you make me laugh. Oh, really? Yeah. You know I try. I know you do. I really and, do. And sometimes I no-sell it because it's, it's po- funnier that way. It's a point of pride when I make you laugh. Empire of Filth Hunter, Troy Inman. Uh, does Emma coming out and hugging Dana count as a face turn? <laughs> Depends on her motivation for I think it's, doing it. I think she's trying to turn Dana heel, right? Yes. I think that's what's going she's on. She's trying to there. say, you know, join me again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what she's trying to do. Uh, Kitchen Aid Cruiserweight Champion Ed. Another good outing for The Miz, which we n- now know. This is a terrible. Uh, Ed, I love you. Thank you for contributing to pay. This is a terrible question, though. Oh, okay. So apparently, <laughs> His yeah. question is just, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> Another good outing for The Miz, which we now know watches uh, fun wrestling as a top-notch super best mark. Yeah. Got a drifter cameo, held his ground two-on-one. He just walked. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Ed, what are you talking? What, what kind of question is that, Ed? What are you doing? And four people upvoted that? It's, it's because of the top notch uh, reference. That is true, though. Top Ed, I love you anyway. Super over. Thank you for your question, Ed. Yes, thank you. What's next? What is next? Let's answer Ed's question, Larson. What's next? Um, I feel like The Miz uh, might get some uh, facial deconstruction surgery to look more like top notch. Oh, ooh. How about that? Yeah, no, I like that. That's good. Is there such a thing as facial deconstruction st- surgery where you make your face more messed up? I honestly think, yeah, it's just botched, botched plastic surgery. Okay, that's what it'll do. So, like, if you can get intentionally botched plastic surgery, yeah. yeah. Um, I want Ed to do what's next questions every week now. Good idea. I want because I'm being positive. Uh, Nathan Raglan always has good questions. Vince asks you to make a new video game using WWE wrestlers as characters. What's the game genre, goal, and wrestlers used so in the game? I assume it can't be a wrestling game. Right, yeah. Let's go outside the box. I would do this. I would take... Here's here's my answer. I would take the tact that uh, Boom Studios Comics is taking with their WWE comics, and I would do... The off stage, but the I'm sorry, the off camera, but in kayfabe. Oh, backstage R- going on. RPG. That's a good idea. Like, kind because I'm thinking like Mass Effect. Yeah, you know, but like set, like so it's all like decision based stuff. Yeah, and it's all using characters. How about this? WWE What's the name movies? of the that Dolph uh, WWE movie? Is it Countdown? Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. want that a game adaptation of that open world GTA yeah. style. Yeah, where you play as Dolph yeah. as cop. Oh yeah. Uh, undercover backstage at WWE show 
where Rusev is apparently Rusev, but also like criminal Rusev. Are we going to find out in your video game if there is a Dolph that exists? Yes. Within, okay. Is that, that question the will be answered. Or is that the answer? Yes. Is, the, is that the answer? There is a Dolph? No, you will find You'll out. You'll find out the answer. Okay. Making sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Torn Brennan Hardy. Mm. Hey, friend. Wouldn't it be cool if Dean treated the Intercontinental title similar to how Naito treated the New Japan Intercontinental title? I think it'd be a cool change to his character since he's billed to be the lunatic fringe. Um, if he was a heel, that might work. But also, if Naito already does it... They're not going to do it. And I don't think... I don't know if WWE would want one of their competitors showing that much disrespect to the belt. Yeah, it's so awesome when Naito does it. Oh, I know. Just kicks it to the ring. It's great. Yeah. Good question. Hidden Leaf Village champion Namikaze Minato. Why did Wyatt come out to help The Miz but didn't come out to attack Balor? That would have made more sense to me. What are we supposed to gather from Wyatt coming out to help The Miz? That he's going to be in a feud with Ambrose for the Intercontinental title after payback? Yeah, that's what I gathered from that as well. That's what I gathered. All right. And then at, once he gets that title off Ambrose, then he'll go into his feud with Balor. He says, Finn, I'm keeping my eye on you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that way we can get the Intercontinental title <laughs> on Finn. On once Finn. again, Bray will be a transitional champion. Maybe it'll be a long transition, though. Maybe we'll get... Dean's going to lose that title soon. And then it'll probably... SummerSlam. Yeah, SummerSlam. Uh, so it'll be a three-month champion. No, who, Bray? Yeah. That's still a transitional champion. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let's see here. Trying to get some people in here. Oh, let me. I always do this. Let me do this. How about this? Pie guy. Pie guy. <clears throat> does Bailey's character hit? Sorry. Does Bailey's character hinder heels? Well, all they can do is make fun of the fact that she's a fan that lived her dream. Um, Alexa can probably think of so many ways to mock her, but just like Charlotte. I think creative is just running the same feud again and again with the same story. I know. It's the same beat every single time. I know. It's the same beat. That's why I want Sasha to go heel, because they can do something different. I know. I don't know if they they probably won't, but they could. Yeah, I know. Uh, there we go. La Sombra Barrow. How far do you think Raw has fallen off since the first post-draft episode? And how do you think it can recover? Because let's admit it, for a go-home show, this was terrible. Here's the big problem. Their top belt isn't on the show. That's a huge problem. That's the it's major, a enormous problem. Who's the number one contender? Obviously, it's going to be Braun or Roman. I think obviously. Yeah. Are they going to do? What are they going to do for SummerSlam? I mean, if, if it's going to be Braun uh, Lesnar for SummerSlam, I, mean, I think. Yeah. Does that necessitate Braun beating Roman at Payback? I would hope so. I would think so, huh? It's, if if as one would assume, if Reigns still sells the effects of the beatdown, mm -hmm. or there's a separated shoulder, broken rib, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that doesn't heal in three weeks. Right. You so, think that would be enough to justify, for, to justify Braun winning. And still kind of protect Reigns. Yeah. You would think. You would think. You would think. But at the same time, in Vince's mind, he might think, oh, this is even steeper odds for Roman to overcome. Yeah, and he's going to overcome him. Yeah. People will love him then. Uh, in, in terms of how far Raw has fallen since the... Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's our cure, I guess, is what we're saying, is... Look, Seth, I, Seth, Seth and Finn are kind of top guys, 1A, 1B. Yeah. Get, like, take them out of this Finn just taking on jobbers and then getting into tag matches. Get rid of that. I mean, it, things will be maybe set up better after payback. This is what I feel like. If it, I, I think the, the absence of the Universal Champion wouldn't be felt as much if the Intercontinental mm -hmm. Champion was a more impactful Yeah, I know. Player. It was like Kevin Owens in the U.S. Championship yes. on, on SmackDown. So, like, maybe when Finn gets the belt. Mm-hmm. It'll, the belt will feel more important. Or even Bray at this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know about Bray because he's been I know, crapped I know. on so much that I it's going to be hard for them to build him back up. Well, this is interesting. Uh, Billy Luke, with Jack Swagger and Simon Gotch being some of the first to go this year, which wrestlers do you think will fall victim to the WWE's dreaded post-WrestleMania release period? When does that usually... It's usually, I think, within the first month after Mania, I think. But with the the brand extension, I don't know if we're going to see as many cuts this I, year. I, yeah, I would. I would. It seems like they kind of need to hold on to talents. Yeah. That said, probably the ascension. Yeah. Because they're not doing anything with them. Yeah. Uh, Mike uh, Demopoulos. <clears throat> I'll start with the positive because I'm an optimist. Good. I love the post-shakeup rosters. That being said, I think WWE completely bungled every aspect of the shakeup. 
mainly trying to finish existing feuds. It screwed up payback and feels like everything else is kind of on pause till payback is over. Rant over, he says. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that uh, anything you guys are looking forward to Sunday? Um, he'll be in the luxury of my home where I can do other stuff during boring matches and other nonsense, but you guys are stuck in the arena. Thanks. Or what are we looking forward to at payback? Seth Samoa Joe should be a fun match. That should be a good match. Yeah, that should be good. Two really good wrestlers. Give them 20 minutes. Let them tell a good story. Like, man, I'll be honest. I don't care what the wrestling show is. If we're there, and we have pretty decent seats. Yeah. I'll be I'll be fine with whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what am I looking forward to? I'm trying to think what I'm looking forward to though. Um Aries Neville, I think, will be good. Yeah. Their first match was good. It'll be better than the Mania match. Yeah. Which I was fine with, but you know, Mania matches are never I don't know. There hasn't been a good Mania match in a while. Um Adam Mayhem. So it looks like the low level WWE writer strikes again with Ambrose and Jericho talking about their pra- past oh, rivalry. No, what the heck? With that in mind, which two superstars would you like to delete all memories from their rivalry and retell their story from scratch? Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. Start that all over. Yeah. Or at least start over Act Three. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do one more and then we'll get to uh Sounds good. K Fabe Corner. Um, Hamza Halal where does John Cena rank on the greatest most iconic wrestlers of all time He's of all time of all time if you were strictly talking WWE I'd say top five yeah I know me too I think that five in WWE I would say since, since Hogan era let's go from there okay so since Hogan era or including including Hogan era okay so Hogan yeah Stone Cold yep The Rock yep Cena yep He's top four. Yeah. Yeah, he's top four. It's those guys. Yeah. Those are like the biggest draws. Yeah. What did Vince just call? He called Cena the Babe Ruth of WWE recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Larson. I think it's time. Sure. It's time. Hold it's. On. Hold on one second. Sorry. Kayfabe Corner time. Tell them what Kayfabe Corner is. It's the greatest wrestling trivia challenge ever. Well, what is it? Go into detail. Oh, uh, 12 names, a mixture of real and fake. Correct. Two, and, two bonus questions. And at the $10 Patreon mark, you can vote. We offer up two superstars. This week, you offered up Daniel Bryan and Kurt Angle. Correct. Who won? Kurt Angle. Okay. So you're going to do 12 names. Yes. Based on Kurt Angle and his history. And some of them will be real, some will be fake. I have to figure out which ones are real, which ones are fake. Yeah, good way of describing it. Number one, are you ready? Yeah. The Collector. The Collector, real. Yeah. Okay. Danny Holiday. Ooh, good name, real. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Z. Fake. Yeah. Tony Broadway. Good name, but fake. Real. Ooh. Uh, five, Bradley Stevens. Fake. Yeah. Uh, Donnie Marlowe. Donnie Marlowe. Good name, but fake. Real. Okay. Uh, Matt Martell. <laughs> fake. Real. Oh, wow. Uh, Robbie Bain. Robbie Bain, fake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Arm Breaker. It's my stomach. The Arm Breaker. Yeah. That's good, but it's fake. Real. Okay. Uh, Slate Randall. Fake. Real. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Uh, Jesse Heartbreaker. Fake. Yeah. Last one. Rex Lane. Fake. Yeah. Was that seven? <laughs> seven. Not First trivia good. question. Uh, who convinced Kurt Angle to go to that infamous ECW show where uh, the Sandman um, got crucified? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jim Ross. Uh, the franchise, Shane oh, Douglas. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I guess they're both from Pittsburgh. Ha, ha. Second trivia question. What was the name of the WWE Developmental Territory where Kurt Angle was sent after signing his contract in 1998? Wait, what was the, it was the WWE Developmental? Yeah. Okay. 
Power Pro Wrestling. Oh, I've heard of that. Okay, I've heard of that. Well, I got seven. I'm fine with seven. It's better than six, I guess. Yes, it is better than six. That is correct. Seven is, in fact, more numbers than six. I think you're up three now. Nice. I have to really put it together. Anyways, we're going to do a bonus episode for you patrons out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got our SmackDown recap episode happening tomorrow. Correct. So check that out. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.